All right, let's talk about what may be the scariest two words in defense right now, drone swarms. Because while we've seen firsthand how FPV drones have changed the way warfare plays out in Ukraine, before long we won't be talking about handfuls of FPV drones, each operated by a single user, and instead we'll be talking about entire swarms of drones operated through distributed artificial intelligence. And that is a very scary thing, especially for air defenders, because no matter how good your air defense system may be, all systems have what we call a saturation point. Now, the saturation point for an air defense system is, very simply, when the system becomes overwhelmed and can no longer identify, target, or engage any more threats. And you can reach a saturation point in a number of different ways. There may be more threats than your software or hardware can track, or there may just be more threats than you have interceptors. And at that point, any threat that you don't manage to engage is going to make it right on through. Now, the United States has been exploring ways to leverage these drone swarms for a long time now. In fact, all the way back in 2011 at MIT, they began work on Perdix drone swarms. These Perdix drones are largely 3D printed. They measure about six and a half inches long and have an 11.8 inch wingspan once deployed. And these drones are small enough that they've even been launched out of the flare canisters of an F-16 in early testing back in 2014. In October of 2016, three US Navy F-A-18 Super Hornets deployed around 103 of these Perdix drones in a single sortie. Those drones went on to collaborate with one another to identify a target for their surveillance and go on to execute that mission. And that's what's so interesting about these Perdix drones. Rather than taking their cues from a lead aircraft, like, say, the Air Force's Skyborg program that aims to pair crewed fighters with AI-enabled drones that will take their cues from the pilot on board that fighter. These Perdix drones instead form what's generally called a leaderless swarm, using distributed computational power to re-coordinate with one another in the event any drones are lost. In other words, these drones use what's generally called a distributed brain, spread throughout all of the systems that are networked together. And as far as we know, 103 is the most of these drones ever deployed at once in a single sortie, but the DoD has been very clear that they intend to deploy them in numbers of more like a thousand. But not all of these drone swarms in development are really drones, like the Air Force's Golden Horde program, which is one of the four vanguard efforts the Air Force has placed a massive amount of emphasis on in recent years. Golden Horde is all about fielding autonomous swarming munitions. These aren't just suicide drones, but can be all sorts of systems, including small diameter bombs. These systems, once deployed from the aircraft, coordinate with one another to identify targets below. They can then distribute those targets amongst themselves or redirect to a more important target if one appears before they make impact with the ground. In 2021, the Air Force even moved to incorporate this technology into miniature air-launched decoys like the ADM-160 Mauled. Now, these air-launched decoys are effectively cruise missiles that swap out their explosive payload in favor of RF transmitters that can broadcast the radar return of just about any aircraft you can imagine. And that allows the U.S. to flood enemy airspace with ghost radar returns of everything from F-15s to B-52s, making it much more difficult to actually identify and target the real aircraft you want to shoot down. According to the U.S. Air Force, they began testing these sea molds or collaborative miniature air launch decoys, in 2022. And these are just a handful of the Air Force's efforts, all aiming to return to what they call air power and mass. You see, for many years now, the Air Force has focused on fielding extremely capable platforms that can do a wide variety of missions. But losing those extremely capable platforms in combat could be a real problem in a large-scale fight. And that's why the Air Force is now focusing on fielding a wide variety of systems, a high-low mix, ranging from extremely inexpensive single-use suicide drones all the way up to extremely capable and expensive AI-enabled collaborative combat aircraft meant to fly alongside the most advanced stealth fighters in the world. And by fielding this distributed mix of systems, the Air Force aims to completely overwhelm enemy air defenses, reaching their saturation 
points very quickly and effectively dominating the airspace, completely overrunning enemy positions with a high volume of aircraft, the same way the US did in World War II, except this time with far fewer pilots being sent home in boxes.